Okay, thank you everybody for coming. Um, welcome, welcome. Uh, we feel very privileged to be spending this time here with you this evening. Um, there are lots of fun things to be doing, even outdoors, and here you chose to be here with us, so um, thank you for that, and uh, we hope you get something out of this. So basically, um, I, my name is Sarah Lovin. I work at the McKnight Foundation. I had to look at my notes to say that. Um, so uh, we would just want to say, um, first off, that we are going to be talking a little bit about some different opportunities and resources that are out there for individual artists in Minnesota. Hopefully, that's what you signed up to do. I um, want to take a quick moment to say thank Mark. you to Angelique Power, who you will uh, meet in a moment if you haven't already met her. She was the instigator of this uh, forum here, and it's always nice to have um, to have that impetus and that person to come forward and say, you know what, the community's been talking about this, let's get together and, and let's have a panel and, and talk with folks. So we tried this last year, um, and we had mingling time, and folks came and uh, we just kind of were out in that other area, and we had one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, and that was great, but what uh, the feedback from that was that it would be nice to have a moment in front of everyone to kind of get, to get the story of, uh, of who each of these folks are, what their organizations are all about, and what sort of opportunities you can connect to. So then during the mingling time, you know who you want to seek out. So the first, um, the first hour in here is going to be hearing from the panelists. And then the second hour, we're going to go out into the other area, and that's where we can have some beverages and some food, and you can seek people out for individual um, kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations. So hopefully that will work for, for everyone, and stay as long as you can or want to, and um, we'll go from there. So why don't we start going down the line, um, and if everyone just wants to introduce themselves, the organization that they are here representing, um, and something... Interesting about yourself, or silly, or amazing. Uh, my name is Greg Nielsen. I'm a program director with the Metropolitan Regional Arts Council. Uh, and something interesting about myself, I don't know if this is interesting, but I am a hobby board game enthusiast. And I just, the other day, my library tipped the 100 mark. I have over 100 board games. So it's sort of embarrassing and sort of interesting, but uh, that's, a, that's me. Thank you. That's awesome. Hi, I'm Angelique Power. I'm the Program Director for Culture for the Joyce Foundation based in Chicago. And um, I used to live in the Twin Cities in the late 90s and into the early 2000s. And um, there was a bar up the street called the Country Bar. And it was like a campy place to do karaoke. And so um, I used to open my set with working nine to five and then move into other things. But every time I come by Intermedia, I always think of the country bar. There'll be karaoke later, and Angelique will be there. Yeah. I'm Arlita Little, Arts Program Officer with the McKnight Foundation. Um, I am a poet when I'm considering myself as a serious artist. Uh, however, I recently started playing the ukulele. Love it! It is so much fun. And there's a complete underground of ukulele players. It, it's like the subculture. It's amazing. Hi, I'm Kathy Ferran. I'm with the Minnesota State Arts Board, where I'm the program officer for Artist Initiative and the Cultural Community Partnership Program. And I worked for 20 years at In the Heart of the Beast, Puppet and Mask Theater. Left there five years ago, and between leaving there and going to the Arts Board, I walked the Camino Santiago in Spain, so 500 miles. They did. Well, my silly thing was not half as cool as theirs. I don't like sandwiches. That's what I was going to say. But now I'm going to keep thinking that. So maybe I'll come up with something better later. Um, so if everyone just wants to take a minute to, well, so basically between now and let's say, we got started a little bit later, between now and like 5.40, because we want to have some time to get some general um, questions from you guys if, if you want to in this forum. Um, if everyone wants to take five to ten minutes, um, and talk about an overview about your organization quickly, and then really dive deeper into the um, specific opportunities that you um, want to talk to with these folks about individual artists. Really? I'll start. Board um, games. 
and board games. We'll talk about board games on break. Um, so to keep it quick, I prefer Q and A. So I'll go through this quick. The Metropolitan Regional Arts Council is one of eleven regional arts councils in Minnesota that works in collaboration with the Minnesota State Arts Board to deliver grants and services funded by taxpayers. So the bulk of our dollars come from uh, the state, either through a general appropriation or a portion of the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. And those uh, dollars support our organizational support grant programs. And we distinguish ourselves from the Arts Board by serving smaller organizationally organizations, so those nonprofits with under $400,000 in annual operating expenses, most are zero to 50, or uh, fiscally sponsored informal groups. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, but our grant programs for organizations largely focus on providing um, dollars for project support for arts, high quality arts activities that are serving a clearly defined community. And there's a lot of face friendly and familiar faces that have, in the audience that have applied to our grant programs. Uh, and I'm also here to talk about our individual artist program. In 2011, we started a program called the Next Step Fund that is done in partnership with uh, McKnight Foundation. They provide the generous support for that program. And that provides about 35 to 40 grants per year, $5,000 in size. And uh, it is to help artists take that next step in their career. So it's very, very focused on this concept of a one-time infusion of funds to help artists overcome a barrier or take advantage of a unique, timely opportunity to help them take that step forward, that step laterally, whatever it may be. But again, it is this concept of project support. Uh, the Next Step Fund program is a little bit of a different animal from a lot of other individual artist grant programs in that we don't take work samples, gas shock, um, up front. It is, it is about a written narrative, uh, a concept or an idea that an artist is working with. The panels are evaluating it based on where artists are in their career, what their goals are, what their unique circumstances are, and how this project will impact them. And that's how they, they rate and review. Uh, the panel consists of uh, largely a collective of, of artists, local artists, um, and um, so they're very familiar with the stories that you, are, uh, you folks share. Um, now the deadline for the Next Step Fund is a March deadline. I'm hoping most of you apply because the deadline was two Mondays ago. Um, and it is an annual grant program, so if you did miss that deadline, you got plenty of time to think about your, your, your project as the year unfolds. Uh, and we do provide a number of services for all of our grant programs, uh, workshops where we really dig into the criteria for the program um, and uh, sit down one-on-one -on -one meetings. And I do want to touch back. So I mentioned inform fiscally sponsored informal groups. So this was marketed as a, as, as a gathering for individual artists. And sometimes those of us over here, our terminology doesn't always match the terminology you might use. So I've been told, for instance, by a choreographer, when do I become an organization between, uh, and when am I an individual artist and how do you conceive of that, that distinction? Because it's fairly uh, accessible to become a fiscally sponsored group activity and apply to us in our other grant programs. And if that's the question, if you're looking at our, our grant programs and you're navigating that, certainly give me a call and I can help you navigate that so that you're not spending too many hours reading our grant guidelines and trying to figure out if you're a fit. Uh, for our organizational support programs. Um, so I think I touched upon all the things I was going to say, and maybe we'll get to questions later. So at the Joyce Foundation, we are primarily, as I, as I mentioned, we're based in Chicago, we're primarily a progressive policy foundation. <clears throat> we fund in areas like gun violence, prevention, and education reform, environment, democracy. And um, all of that is looking at policies on the federal and state level. And the culture program that I manage is different because we don't do cultural policy, but we're similar in that we look at systems that are in place and we focus on trying to level the playing field. And for us, that focus is racial equity in the arts. So what does that mean? Um, that means that we believe and acknowledge that there is a historic inequity, um, historic racism that is structural, that is systemic, that is part of our arts ecosystem. And so we work primarily in Chicago to try to do systemic interventions. Um, 
we focus on, and I'm going to use the term Alana, African, Latino, Asian, Arab, Native American. So we focus on Alana artists, Alana arts organizations, and um, Alana arts administrators. And so the time that we get to move outside of Chicago and do funding um, in other areas is when we focus on Alana artists. And that's through our Joyce Award program. So um, that's kind of the overview of Joyce and culture. The Joyce Award program is an annual award opportunity. And um, we fund in six different cities in Chicago, in Cleveland, in Detroit, in um, Indianapolis, and in Milwaukee, and Minneapolis, and St. Paul. So I guess seven, if you want to separate Minneapolis and St. Paul. Yes, she said yes, separate that. Um, <clears throat> and so um, what we're looking for are partnerships between a lot of artists and any nonprofit organization. It doesn't have to be an arts and cultural organization. It's a $50,000 award, and um, it really goes to commission new work from the artist. So, um, details. We have a letter of inquiry that's due soon, April 5th, and um, that should be a couple pages that talks about the artist, the organization that's commissioning the new work, what the project will be, um, and a component of the Joyce Awards is kind of community co-ownership of the project. Community defined however the artist and the organization wants to define it. So um, it's often like a code word for like black and brown communities. And um, if that is what the artist wants to do, then, then that is, you know, absolutely should be part of the application. But it, the community could be other dancers or it could be other playwrights or it could be um, different institutions. And so we don't dictate that. Um, <clears throat> the thing that we really focus on is kind of, we, I like to call the Joyce Awards a chemistry experiment, where what happens in the proposal is not going to be what the result is. Um, really, it's, you know, what happens when you bring together this artist and this organization and whomever the community is, um, how is everyone sort of transformed and changed by the process that takes place. It should happen in two years. So the LOI that's due April 5th should be for a project that will occur between 2017 and 2019. And we don't dictate the budget. So um, the entire project budget could be 50,000, the commission could be 50,000, and the project budget could be more than that. Um, the only thing that our reviewers look at is how much is going directly to the artist. And if it's not enough, if it's not a lot, if it's not a substantive part of the budget, then it's a problem. Um, I'm trying to think of other like frequently asked questions that come up. Um, process, the LOIs, we get them from the seven cities. From there, in May, we'll invite full proposals. Around 20 full proposals will be invited. Um, I have a national review panel that's outside of the Great Lakes region, and they spend the month of July reviewing the 18 to 20 proposals. I do one-on-one -on -one phone calls with them in August. We don't pull people together for a panel, which I've been part of panels, and it's you know a wonderful experience. In our experience, we find that sometimes with panels, group dynamics take over, and um, people are influenced by some, and so uh, it's more labor-intensive to do the calls, but it also, gives me a lot of feedback that then I share with anyone who gets to the end of the Joyce Award process and they have not been funded. Um, from those calls, we get about five to six Joyce Awardees that rise to the top to be um, nominated. That goes to our board, and in December, early December, they make the final decision. So that is the process. I do have a question. Yeah. Um, so for folks who are wondering, who, who gets to apply, or is it both? Is it Do you want to see, hear from the individual artist, or do you want to hear from the organization, or could either apply? You know, I um, either can apply. I will say that in the last few years, we've had more artists write the 
proposals and write the letters, and they're just much more interesting to read, I find. <laughs> they are. They don't have like the sort of speak of what, you know, uh, development is the hardest job, so don't get me wrong. But uh, but it doesn't have sort. It's not sort of like get, you know, ge geared toward foundation speak. It's really more about the artist and what they're trying to do. So anyone can send in the LOI. Uh, no, because the LOI is four to five awards every year. Okay. Overview of the McKnight Foundation. The McKnight Foundation is a family foundation located here in Minnesota um, that is dedicated to uh, improving the quality of life for all Minnesotans. We have about $2 billion in assets and make about $90 million in grants each year. Uh, the grants are divided among nine program areas, one of which is our arts program. And um, we grant up almost $9 million in arts funding each year. Our arts program is dedicated to developing support structures for working artists in Minnesota. And what that means is we're really trying to develop an ecosystem in which artists can grow, develop, and thrive here in our state. Um, we fund primarily arts organizations, nonprofit organizations, um, who are providing those supports to artists. Uh, we fund throughout the state, um, and we make a variety of different types of grants to organizations. Um, in terms of support for individual artists, we work primarily through organizations to uh, distribute our funds to artists. Um, Greg talked a little bit about the funding that goes through MRAC. We fund all of the regional arts councils um, who do regranting to individual artists throughout the state. Uh, and then we also have a fellowships program uh, that focuses on providing fellowship support to mid-career artists throughout the state. Uh, in the fellowships program, we support artists right now in 10 different disciplines uh, and work with eight different partners to administer those fellowships. And I'll just go through them really quickly. Um, for ceramic artists, we work with Northern Clay Center, uh, choreographers, the Cole Center, composers, American Composers Forum, dancers, the Cole Center, media artists, um, IFP, uh, musicians, McPhail Center for Music, Playwrights, the Playwright Center, theater artists, also the Playwright Center, visual artists, um, Minneapolis College of Art and Design, and then writers. We work with the Loft for administering those fellowships. We make 38 fellowships a year. They're all $25,000 each. Uh, and with the fellowship award, each fellow uh, has the opportunity, usually in conjunction with the organization, um, that is administering the fellowship to participate in some activities to advance their artistic and professional development. Just, I think that's pretty much it for me. Arlita, if people didn't have a chance to write down all of that awesome information, where can they find it? <laughs> I brought flyers in um, so that folks can get information both on our arts program and on the fellowships program tonight. Um, but then also uh, our website at mcknight.org, uh, click on the arts program and you can also click specifically on the fellowships page, um, which will link out. It'll give you general information and there's an awesome video you should check out for the fellowships program uh, that stars some of our fellows, which is um, a wonderful piece of work done by a fellow. Uh, and then we also have two um, site administrators in-house tonight. Andrew from IFP, just wave your hand. And Billy from the American Composers Forum, wave, wave your hand. If you're a composer or a media artist, um, they are the experts in the room. Otherwise, I'll be taking questions too. Well, hi, I'm Kathy from the Arts Board. And um, our funding is all public funding. We have six of our ten grant programs are open to individuals. I run two of those programs, and I'll probably focus most of my time there, but I'll, the others that are open to individuals to apply are arts learning, arts tour, folk and traditional arts, mm, how I knew I'd, uh, it'll come to me, arts tour, I said that, arts learning, uh, Anyway, I'll come back to it. There is a brochure. No festivals isn't open to individuals. Um, the okay, this is a this is a prize. This is a quiz. Right? Okay, so anybody who can. What's that? 
That's one of mine. I'm coming there. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Good. That's you not want to try. I don't know what it is yet. It might be a sandwich, <laughs> but you want it. <laughs> Should be money. Right? <laughs> Artist Initiative and the Cultural Community Partnership Program. Um, so, art, arts learning, arts tour, um, the uh, folk and traditional arts program, those are all about serving others in the state. Um, whether teaching or touring or um, working in a folk and traditional arts form. Uh, Artist Initiative and Cultural Community Partnership are the two programs that are focused on the artist and the artist development. Artist Initiative uh, has a deadline that's coming up in, for performing in literary arts in June, uh, June 10th. Visual arts will be August 5th. The, Application materials just went up on our website earlier this month. Uh, Cultural Community Partnership has a deadline of September 16th. Um, and those materials will become available in uh, late June. You can review the materials from last year for that program on our website. Everything's done online. Um, Artist Initiative has, uh, you can apply from anywhere from $2,000 to $10,000. No match is required, uh, but you can add other income to the project and other expenses. Cultural Community Partnerships, the grant are $1,000 to $8,000. That program is only for artists of color working in partnership with a nonprofit organization. Um, what I tell folks is it's a slightly different program than Artist Initiative, but if you can apply for both, do. You can only accept one, but that is a great problem to have if you've been recommended for both. Uh, cultural community partnerships, you can only get two of those in your lifetime. So, you know, that one you can keep in your hip pocket, so to speak, um, if you can apply. Um, what we're looking for in applications is a project, in, this is Artist Initiative and in Cultural Community Partnerships, uh, a project that is strategic to your career development. And the panels are all made up, these are discipline specific panels in Artist Initiative. Cultural Community Partnerships, it's not discipline specific, but everyone's an artist or a curator or an editor. Um, working with individuals so they understand exactly um, where you're coming from as a as an individual artist and um, in artist initiative visual artists are looking at visual arts applications and so being specific uh, having a project that is an artistic stretch but not so big that you can't accomplish it in a year um, is something that we're looking for. Uh, have all of our projects require a community component, and those don't have to be nailed down, but we definitely want people to have explored possibilities. Um, sometimes they are nailed down, and that's great. Uh, but if you have um, um, something that you can do, that you know you can do, and you indicate that I'll have an open studio or I'll have a display at the local park center or the coffee shop. What we're looking for there in that community component is something that's appropriate to your career level and something you haven't perhaps done a million times before and also that will bring a new audience to your work. Um, we want to sort of help you make that next push and I know a number of you in the room have received these. So, um, in fact, can people just raise their hand if you've ever gotten one? Great, good, thank you. Um, and so there are people to talk to, um, and I would highly recommend that. Um, we also have some videos online uh, that interview six different artists who received this award, some of whom have also served on our panels. And so I would highly recommend that you look at that if you haven't seen them already. Also, each of the grant programs has sample applications from people who actually received that grant. So if you're looking to apply to any of our programs, I would highly recommend looking at those samples. 
we choose them because we think that they've been well written, or the um, you know the they did a particularly good job of laying things out. We also offer uh, webinars, and we'll read um, a draft application provided you get it to me or any of the other program officers if you're applying in a different area two weeks in advance of the deadline. Uh, so I think that's it. Thank you. This is yeah. Angelique was just saying that it's helpful to be able to read a draft. So um, do you, does anyone have anything else that they want to say before? So for folks who just joined us, um, this is the panel portion of the evening. And then after this, um, we're going to move out over into the commons area and we're going to have some beverages and food and stuff where you can ask one-on-one -on -one questions. But this is really a great time to have... Um, did somebody lose a cell phone? Did somebody lose a cell phone? Does it look like that? Yes? Yay! Okay, well, you can just get it from Eleanor. If, well, and there's Eleanor Savage from the Jerome Foundation. Who is also here um, for for the one on one time? So, is there anything that people, any questions that folks have, kind of for the general order of the? Okay, so your hand up, go up first. So we're gonna start over here. Very evenly, provocator. Um, are there any grants, fellowships that will encourage me to collaborate with persons of diversity so that we can each enrich each other's careers and outreach to the communities? Do you work for an organization? No. All right. So in our cultural community partnership program, uh, you would have to it has to be with an organization. So. Um, So, for instance, Greg, in the Next Step Fund, could an artist come up with whatever they wanted to do with, if their next step was working with people in a different cultural community, could that be something that they could apply for? Absolutely. So, if that is the direction your career is going and you feel that that's what's going to take you in that new direction, reaching a new community, uh, it could be done through marketing, it could be done through collaboration, that absolutely is, is acceptable. Travel is acceptable, purchase of equipment, anything that helps you meet that definition of a, of, of a next step, yes. Yeah, we've got two hands that came up over here and then up to So, Kathy, um, when you were talking about um, Arts Board ones, and there were six, and you said that those were open to individuals, because I thought arts learning had to be an arts organization. No, you can be an arts, uh, you know, a teaching artist okay. and apply to, you know, work with a particular community. Okay. Um, doesn't have to be a school age audience. It can be, you know, it's birth to cradle to grave. Um, so they would be the fiscal agent? No, nope. you apply as an individual. Um, if your grant, if you want more than $25,000, these are very big grants. What's the, what's the range? Uh, 5000 to 150000 I really caution people. Um, those big amounts are so seductive. Um, but they are, you really have to have your ducks in a row and be well established as a uh, as an administrator, really, of your own work. Uh, any grant over fifty thousand is reconciled, which means every receipt, every journal entry. You know, it's a lot of administration. So what I tell, do tell people is pick a project that's manageable. Um, apply for a small one the first time out. That goes well, great. Apply for more the next time. There's no waiting period in between. So, like, you don't have to sit out for three years or anything like that. Oh, and, um, you know, you, you roll them off pretty quick. Is there a spot on the website particularly that addresses these that are available to individuals? Yes. What you do is you go to our navigation bar, and you select Grants for Artists, and the whole list, the six, will appear. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, um, my question is for the Joyce Foundation. It was wonderful to hear about the arts program. I didn't know that you had one. Um, so I'm just curious if you could tell, tell us about one or two projects that you've seen come to fruition that you think really um, you know, meet, have, have 
kind of met your vision. Um, so the Joyce Awards, interestingly enough, because it's the one program where we fund outside of the city of Chicago, um, <clears throat> we have more Joyce Awardees from the Twin Cities than we do any other area, including Chicago. Um, and we were sort of talking about, before the panel started, the community meal, create the community meal, say to Jones. So he was a Joyce Awardee. We actually have, um, not for all Joyce Awardees, the ones that we can sort of um, connect and that are interested in this, we'll send film crews out to follow them through the creative process. And so we have a really cool video of Say 2 actually up, trying to figure out like how he's going to do this project. Um, and then this last round, we announced two Joyce Awards um, from the Twin Cities. But actually, before I get there, just to get a little bit deeper into your question, like why is that a successful project? Um, so it was in partnership with Public Art St. Paul, and it was sort of pushing on the notion of what public art is. And it was also um, steeped in art history in terms of being a, a happening, but it was also an abstraction from art history in terms of um, looking at something that is really relevant to the 21st century of food deserts, of urban farming, um, and had this concept of, of baked in community co-ownership to the success of the project. So in many ways that's that's like the perfect Joyce Award. And it also had that element of like, is this gonna happen, how is this gonna happen, you know? And so that's um, something that I think we like to do. We like to be able to lift those artists that are taking these risks. Um, and, you know, I think one, one piece that allowed it to kind of get through the scrim of criteria and funding was the role of the organization. It really exemplified a great partnership that Public Art St. Paul was ready to raise more money if more money was needed, was going to handle a lot of the um, administration and logistics and planning so that that wasn't all on C2. And that's something that we really look for to be a partnership that we want to invest in. This last year, though, we did announce two other Joyce Awards from the Twin Cities, um, a partnership with Penumbra <laughs> Theater and um, Zakia Alexander, who is a playwright, and Imani Uzuri, who is a composer. They're doing a piece, Girl Shakes Loose Her Skin, which is a new work based on the life of Sonia Sanchez. And then we also um, announced a Joyce Award with Ragamala Dance and Aparna Ramaswamy. These are great questions. Keep them going. We have Jimmy, and then this woman, and the guy in the blue hat, and then we'll be open for, for more. My brain can only handle so much. Um, I'm one of the founders of Mentoring Peace Through Art, and we are basically one of the few um, colored nonprofits in the arts in Minnesota. And we very happily work with any artist to uh, confront the issues in diversity. Hi. Um, I don't know, is this working? So I'm Angela, or Reyna, whatever, and I'm a Native American woman, and um, I try to apply for some grants, and I guess I have to be like nice or something. So I just, I'd rather die, okay? This is just me. So what I wanna do, I'm not gonna be Minnesota nice, I'm not gonna go around smiling at everyone and pretending I care to meet people. What I wanna do is I wanna write my book and help people who are mentally ill, and in prison, and they're being tortured, and that's what I want money for. So where can I get some money for that crap? <laughs> well, first off, I can, we can all say that's not crap, and thank you for asking the question, because it's a good one. Like, where do you where do you go when you're really passionate about something that it's not coming across, maybe in the grants? Yeah, and also I'm just not that sweet. I don't know, I like it. Okay, go ahead, Kathy. All right. Um, well, artist initiative and cultural community partnerships would be both a pro both programs would be open to you. And so, what I would say is, you have to tell your story. It's less than two pages long. Um, you provide a work sample. As I said, the panel is made up of other writers. We work really hard. Our rules are state rules require that all the panelists be Minnesota residents. 
So these are Minnesota writers. We work really hard to make sure that panel is as diverse as it can be, both in age, gender, geography, and in ethnicity. So we want, in, the, in an ideal world, each of our panels would fully represent all of Minnesota. And so that if you are presenting work that one person really finds difficult, that there is somebody on the panel that can speak to the value of the work and give a perspective that what I see happen all the time, which I think is the best piece of this, is people will come in with, they have read the materials, they have pre-scored their, and it's just a pre-score, and then we have a, a discussion period. Now it's only 10 minutes, it's not long, but I've seen people who come in and say, I just don't understand where she's coming from here. And then the person across the table says, well, this is what I think. And then you see that light bulb go off in the other person's head, and oh, okay, now I get it. And that makes all the difference. Now everybody scores privately and anonymously so that they can put their true score down. Um, you get to, you can be in the room to listen to that review, or you, um, at, after it's all done, we attach the um, audio clip from your review to your application, and we provide your scores. So we tell you what you scored in a particular criteria, what the competitive score was, and so then you can see, okay, they loved my work, the artistic quality is just fine, but they really didn't understand my plan, the merit and feasibility of the plan, they got confused. And then you hear the audio, and you go, okay, all right, so they weren't clear how I was going to, you know, what piece of equipment I was going to buy, or, you know, how many hours I was going to spend working on this. So that helps you then reframe that application for the next time. And I have seen people, you know, apply two, three, four times, and each time they will make it better and better and stronger. And so, and eventually, if your work is there, if you have the quality of work there, you'll be successful. I, what I tell folks all the time, don't give up, keep at it, use all the services that are available, and, you know, Artist Initiative and Cultural Community Partnership. They are slightly different, and just give me a call and we can talk them through. We have a lot of independent presses here in the state of Minnesota too, so seeking them out for, as resources too. New Rivers Press, Milkweed, Grey Wolf, and the Loft Literary Center is also a great place to seek out um, additional services. So, Sarah, I just want to add a little bit to that last question. <clears throat> um, uh, certainly that project would also fit in the Next Step Fund. We've, we've, we've funded very similar activities, in fact. The, the, the measure of the Next Step Fund, though, is always on the impact on you as the applicant artist. So if you are working in prisons, for example, the impact on, on the men or women there is not, is, is not a measure of that program's success. However, we've also funded artists to work in prisons in our community arts and arts activity support. This gets back to the fiscally sponsored question. And so you may very well be eligible for funding in that program. That would take a little conversation with me. In terms of honesty, bluntness, um, how you write your proposal, I always encourage honesty. And, and for our, most of our grant programs, we also do draft feedback. And so if you want to bounce something off of me or try it with me first, I can help you if you feel you need to massage it. We don't encourage grant speak in our grant programs because raise your hand if you've been a panelist for NRAC before. So this, these are the folks that sit on our panels. They're here because they want to be applicants, then they serve on our panels. So that honesty, they can tell when you're, when you're feeding them a line and they want to know that, that honesty up front anyway. So. Are there other sources of funds uh, that should be on the panel today that aren't here today that you could tell us about, number one? Number two, uh, is there a schedule of deadlines on some website that we can look up to see what's what's coming from this various uh, 
And three, are there people who, like those that help uh, people figure out what college to go to, that help <laughs> artists, help match artists with the right funds, who really know the territory, like, like you know the territory? I would uh, steer you towards Springboard for the Arts, um, both for the, you know, I believe they have a, a grand grant calendar that has all of our deadlines that they keep updated, and the Minnesota Council on Foundation, those two. Um, and at Springboard, you can meet with a counselor um, to, you know, for all different kinds of things, but something as specific as fundraising and, you know, developing an application, um, I believe they would offer that as well. And I can't remember what your initial, you had a couple things. Uh, oh, yeah. If you live in St. Paul, the Knight Foundation, they are open to individuals and some really cool things are being funded. That's the one I think of. I also think of the Jerome Foundation, oh, which um, provides a lot of support for emerging artists. Um, you, their website is certainly a place that you should uh, check out and visit. They offer a few fellowship programs, uh, I know in film and video. And, travel study grants, um, and a new composer fellowship as well. Um, so they, especially if you are um, relatively young in terms of the, the development of your body of work, um, Jerome Foundation would be an excellent resource. Hey, okay, we've got time and for And Eleanor is here, and you can talk with her as in the milling around portion. Yeah, so I already said yes to this guy, and then I saw your hand, So and then you. So can we do you three, and then, I'm so sorry, person up in the back, but hopefully we'll be able to get that question answered in the one-on-one -on -one time. So we want to make sure that you have time to mingle with everyone and ask those, those other things. Does that sound good? Okay. Uh, Bruce Stillman. I direct a lot of art programs. One of them is Big Stone Advancing Arts, Big Stone Mini Golf and Sculpture Garden. How many people have heard about Big Stone Mini Golf and Sculpture Garden? I urge every one of you to go out there this summer and see what's going on. We have opportunities in a rural setting that's really healthy, and we will support any idea that we're interested in supporting. You know, we like the creative <laughs> ideas. I mean, give us some of your ideas, because we're, we go from, you know, we have a lot of visual art and stuff like that, but we want some theater or, or some performances with instruments. You have to come see. One of our, our big qualms right now is the $75 million going to the Walker Art Center and some of the poison that comes out of that art center. There's an imbalance going on. And, and we are doing, maybe, we're organic. And, 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 and if you don't mind to, you know, doing sculptures and having goats and standing on them and, and stuff like that, and chickens walking around while we're playing golf and horses, that, 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 that's what we're about. We're a complete balancing to the imbalance of 75 million going to the Walker Art Center. And, and, and hopefully we can get some more funding, but we do have some funding, and that's all I want to introduce you, and hope you can talk to me later if you want. Thank you for that. Who was the person up there who had an organization that I didn't catch the name? Jamie Lee Correa. Mentoring Peace Through Art. Mentoring Peace Through Art. Thank you. Jamie, are you going to be here in a little bit? Yeah. Let me know. My name is Dante Pernal. I'm a local Twin Cities artist as well as performing arts educator. I've had a piece that's been done for the Minnesota Fringe as well as had a grant for the Euro Undergraduate Research Opportunity Grant Program at University of Minnesota Duluth. It's called Word the Urban Musical. It's been done twice for the Minnesota Fringe. And a matter of fact, there's an actual sheet outside at least along the community board that's not that far away. But nonetheless, within this piece, it is a piece that is almost my creation that is involved in somewhat of a true story about the last like hip hop and army radio station that happened within East St. Louis, which is Magic 108, but this one I kind of created as Word 108. The story is more along the lines of KRS One's line, rap is something you do, hip hop is something you live, in which we are set back into 1984, and all these characters are set up along all the elements of hip hop that you can think of. My main issue that I've had with making this show possible is trying to apply for it across the board. As far as Jerome Foundation, the Knight Foundation, even Springboard for the Arts, 
even within certain Twin Cities artists, and it seems like I am a daddy trying to raise my 10-year-old by itself, because as of April 24th, it'll be 10 years old. Now, within a piece like this, it is a very multicultural play. I mean, as, as far as hip-hop is concerned, a lot of people really don't realize that hip-hop has its, has its elements, and it goes back to the jazz, to rock, to funk, and all in between. Now, to try and actually bring that to the stage, I'm not too sure which program that you guys speak of would actually fit something like that. I don't know if you guys have like an opinion on that at all. Do you have a partner that you're working with? Do you have a nonprofit organization? I don't at this time. That's the issue, I guess. Okay. I mean, it would be for Joyce. That would be the issue. You would need a nonprofit partner that was going to help you develop and stage it. Is this a solo performance? No, it is a full-scale musical. Okay, so you have collaborators you work with on the project, and you could put together what we would call an advisory committee of peers to help sort of work on it. It might be your piece, but it would be done as a group collective. Yes. And uh, so uh, we have two programs I mentioned earlier, Arts Activity Support, Community Arts. I think when it comes to first grants for, for emerging groups, MRAC is often one of the first sources of funding here, in the metro area at least. Mm -hmm. And so I would definitely grab my business card and call me soon and just get on our radar and have, sit down, have a sit-down conversation and we can map out a calendar for you. But those are the two programs I would point to. Okay. Yeah. Maybe um, this would be a good opportunity to clarify. Um, perhaps McKnight fellowships are unique in that we are not providing uh, project or program support. The fellowships really are to award an artist for a body of work, a mid-career artist that lives here in Minnesota for a body of work and what they have already established and accomplished. One other thought is if you um, have an aspect of this project that you want to try out, further develop, with that could be done in a in a year's time on a small budget, only ten thousand um, dollars, approach it that way as an artist initiative or a cultural community partnership. If you have a partner, um, both of those would be possibilities. I think. <coughs> All right, people, we have time for one more. And don't give up on your project, because it sounds really great. It sounds really important. Do you guys offer any grants for uh, international projects for visual arts? Um, if the organization is based in either in the city limits of Minneapolis or St. Paul, the artist can be an international artist for the Joyce Awards. Yeah, for the Next Step Fund, if you are a, a, a resident of the Seven County Metro area, but you're going to do a travel study or you're going to, you know, go elsewhere to do an activity and it's going to benefit you as a Metro artist here, then you're eligible. That project would be eligible in Next Step Fund, yes. And then also, as we mentioned, Jerome has a travel study grant you might want to take a look at. Art sport funds do have to be used here within the state of Minnesota. Hi, I'm a, a visual artist, uh, and I, I'm a frustrated grant writer who's been unsuccessful at the uh, in your program there, Kathy. And I'm always... Uh, and I, uh, <laughs> um, I don't need to criticize. I'm, I'm kind of curious how, uh, uh, I, since I'm a visual artist, I'm not a good writer, and I always struggle with the writing aspect of it to make my visual stuff sound good when you read it. Um, is there a reason that the applicants can't say anything during the review of the of the project? Because um, I've, in all of my instances where my grant application came forward. Um, the, the panel got hung up on these little technicalities that were, were in my mind, were they were not roadblocks at all, or they were just easy things to overcome, or they weren't even a, an issue at all in my mind, uh, and in reality. So, um, why, do, why, do, why do we have to? Why do we have to keep our mouth shut at the at the review panel? One issue, of course, is time, uh, and the other issue is. You know, that's been the standard procedure since I've been there, which is only five years, not that long. Um, and we 
what we do in one program, we try to do in all programs. Um, if your artist initiative has 800 applications, each one that's eligible is reviewed. So this would take a very long time if we were to have questions on top of uh, what we're already doing. So that's one issue. My suggestion to you is get me that draft. And I've sat through more than 100 panels and I know where the, you know, the trip wires are. And I can ask you, you know, you talk about this, but I don't understand how you got here. Uh, those are the kinds of things that, you know, panels, we only fund 20% of applications that are coming in through to artist initiative um, so it's it's easy to fall below that line and then just to reiterate uh, Kathy talked earlier earlier about springboard for the arts Noah Kiesecker at springboard is an excellent resource and he has uh, a workshop on um, completing applications where he actually will go through an application with you uh, and provide feedback and sometimes he also pairs artists so writers with visual artists for example to uh, help to complete an application process his first name is Noah second name Kiesecker K-E-E-S-E-C-K-E-R did I get that right? Jack <laughs> no, okay we have one I, just to add, really quickly, um, uh, we don't. We also don't allow uh, feedback and interactions. You know, th there's an equity issue here, and that some artists and organizations they work day jobs, they can't attend a meeting, and it would provide an unfair advantage to certain applicants. And that transparent process of attending a panel meeting and hearing your grant being reviewed can be extraordinarily frustrating. And I would always say, call your program director afterwards to help them filter some of those comments. What you hear as they said this minor little thing and it's what sunk it. Sometimes we say, you know what, our perspective is that was said, but it really wasn't the issue, and we can kind of have that little back and forth afterwards. Okay, one more question. Hey, this is somewhat related to a couple of people's. Um, I have a particular project that involves uh, me as a facilitator and kind of producer of a music album, but it's uh, racial justice oriented. I don't particularly want to make much money myself, but I definitely want to make money for everyone involved. It would involve quite a number of artists that I'm bringing together. And so it seems like a lot of these grants are more about developing the artists, and it would develop me in terms of my connections and artistry, but I just don't want to make a lot of money. So what do you say about that? And it would probably be like fifteen thousand dollars, something like that. Well, I'll just say that I think um, at Choice we're kind of learning a lot by the types of applications we're getting. We've gotten um, proposals for sound artists. We've gotten proposals to create hip hop albums. We've gotten proposals to create podcasts. And so we've actually removed all our distinctions in terms of discipline between categories. And, you know, it's kind of exciting for us when we get something from an artist that's looking to, that's kind of playing with the idea of what a commission is. So I don't know if that answers your question. Um, I don't know if you're an Alana artist, I can't see you. But I don't think that that precludes you from support. Um, the not wanting a lot of money, if you're an Alana artist, then I would say you should give yourself some money if you're doing this. <laughs> With Artist Initiative and Cultural Community Partnerships, you build your own budget. Um, you indicate who you're going to pay and what you're going to pay them. Um, I really encourage people to pay themselves. Nobody expects the plumber to show up for free. And yet, artists time and time again are expected to show up for free. So don't short sell yourself short. Um, talk about why you don't want an artist fee, if that's the case, so that you can uh, uh, use the funds to pay your uh, musicians. But uh, you get to build that budget however you like. Um, so I have a really important question that will speak to this. Okay, can I say one thing first? Yeah. Um, there's also resources at Minnesota Music Coalition, the Cedar Cultural Center, like looking for those hubs in your community that uh, that 
other artists have gone there to ask some similar questions about um, making an album, building something bigger than yourself, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then also Indiegogo and Kickstarter, although, you know, they're kind of, whatever, old, they're, they're gone, their time has passed. Like, they're actually super, they can be super successful if you, if you have a media presence. Um, so I encourage you to look at that too. <laughs> so this is just making me think um, brief uh, about the fact that I would like you to speak to everyone um, about the risk of selling yourself short. So like you think, oh, I'm more likely to get the grant if I only ask for $1,000 as opposed to $10,000. And can you um, maybe say publicly that that's not the case and speak to why? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Next Step Fund is one of the smaller grants here. It's $5,000, and I would say 99.9% .9 of individuals ask for the full five, and there's no reason not to. Our other grant programs fund up to $10,000. Most people ask for the full month. There's no reason not to, and they're reviewed by artists. I've never heard anybody say ever, this artist is being paid too much. It's never been an issue. So you're hearing from me, pay yourself. It's fine. Build that into the budget. You do have to legitimize what you're doing and contributing to the project, but it's not an issue of pay. I have heard reviewers say, like, the artist seems to be getting a lot of money. And I think that's the role of a program officer. That's why I do these types of information sessions in different cities. That's why I say in the budget directly to people who apply, there should be a good amount for artists. That's why when I talk with a reviewer that says that, I correct them. I do think that it's a misconception that artists should work for free or not be paid as much. And it's hard work to try and change that perception, but that, I think, is our job to do that. So again, there's now a budget associated um, with the McKnight Artist Fellowships, and uh, those fellowship applications absolutely are the time to bring it. So whatever you think is your best and your brightest relative to the discipline you're applying to, you should include. The other thing to remember is that grants are taxable income. So you will pay payroll taxes on that amount that is your artist fee. So bill it as a gross amount, just like you do at a job. They tell you, I'll pay you 25 an hour. You don't take that home. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're putting your budgets together. There's a national survey that says that 97% of respondents thought that the arts were important, but only 26% of them identified individual artists as being important to that. Right? Disconnect. So I think we can all, we're, we're all here in this room because we believe in the power of artists and the power of art in our lives. And so let's just leave that as a charge that we have to start bending that perception and make sure that that's not something that uh, we get caught up in as individuals. So thank you, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. I think we have food and beverages out there until seven o'clock, so hope you're hungry.